Hey everyone, what's going on and welcome back to Sheffield United where I've had an incredibly busy transfer window so we'll get right into it. I won't dilly-dally any longer and I'll start with the main man. He's in the thumbnail, probably in the title too. Welcome home, Dominic Calvert-Lewin. What a, what a young player he is. English, 24 years old. Homegrown club is Sheffield United, of course. He left Sheffield United for Everton and now I've brought him back home. Not the only person I've brought back home to Sheffield. We'll get to that one later on. But look at him. 15 finishing, composure's great, concentration's great, off the ball's great, heading's fantastic, his jumping reach is pretty good too. Acceleration, not a slow player either. He's fast, he's deadly. Wasn't massively prolific for Everton last year, he nearly got relegated, of course. 12 goals in 34 appearances for him last year. I've already played four games this year, including the Community Shield, but in three league appearances, six goals. He scored in the Community Shield as well for a total of seven in four. Average rating of eight in the league so far. I've never been so vindicated by a transfer. And as much as I would like to dwell on Dominic Calvert-Lewin, there's a lot of players in and out I need to talk about. We'll start with the outs. Ben Osborne, we got 14.5 million for up front, 19 million total. This was just an inbound transfer that popped in without me trying anything. I wasn't intending to let him go, but the offer was too good to turn down. 14 and a half million up front. As much as I love Ben, he wanted a new contract. I wasn't willing to I wasn't willing to give him the money he wanted. Or annoying that he's actually on a wage that at Burnley now that I would have accepted, but never mind. Enjoy your time there, Ben. I liked you, but you did annoy me towards the end. I sold Jack Robertson for basically his value, 3.6 million. Quite a decent player, but very much a squad option. Basham, a similar boat, 6 million. He was 32 at the point I sold him. Barely played him last year. 6 million for a player who was 32 and only had a year left on his contract at that point as well. I don't think we've got any people left who contract runs out in 2022. McGoldrick is the only one and he's out on loan. Freeman you didn't ever saw because he was on loan last year. I sold him to Burnley for about £9 million. Max Lowe, similar deal. £2 million he was worth. £2 million I sold him for. Bizarre one, that one, because they brought him in for £4 million. Oliver Burke, you saw briefly at the beginning and then I sent him on loan for the remainder of the season. He's gone to Alaves of all places for about £4.5 million. And that's about it for the outbounds. The only other outbounds are loan players I've already brought in first. So now the inbounds. So the first player I brought in was Marcus Edwards. Obviously that right-hand side with Hakon Evian was a potential problem. Although Evian did pick up towards the end of the year. But an English player, Marcus Edwards, I've heard a lot about him in this year's game. And I can see why. Very pacey. Mentals are quite good too. Mentals are a bit 50-50 actually. His work rate's quite low. His positioning's low. And his bravery's low. But flair, composure, decisions, all on the high side. His technicals are on the high side too. 13 finishing's quite decent too for a right side of player. Penalty taking 14. We've improved our penalty takers. That's for certain this year. Inverted ring on the right hand side. English option to go with Dominic Calvert-Lewin. He's not the last English player either. I've inadvertently stuck to the Sheffield United homegrown ethos. But once of Tottenham, now of Sheffield United. Welcome, Marcus Edwards. Welcome back to England. And I'll quickly run through all the end of contract players. Uh, Francisco Gonzalez. I may have done these already in January when I, most of them came through, but he came in. Doesn't have a world permit. Yeah, I messed up on the world permit thing. Because of Benoit Badashiel, I thought players that didn't need a world permit didn't need to be registered. I thought they'd be fine to play in the Premier League. They're not. Badashiel must have had a world permit. I never really noticed. So he's gone out on loan to Philadelphia. Jory Hendricks is fine. He's in my side. I've been through him. He's just a very solid midfielder. Great workhorse player. Casero is not great on Adam Smith at right back and Bogle. Slightly declining now, but he is 32. And he does play both sides if necessary. Matthias Palacios is an attacking midfielder. Was ideally meant to be my attacking midfielder, but doesn't have a world permit. So same situation as Gonzalez. Trying to move him on, on loan somewhere so he can get a world permit next year. Same situation with Sergio Gomez, who Dortmund let go for whatever reason. Has got the potential. These players, at bare minimum, will be money banks. And not an end of contract, but Renier's in the same boat. Compensation came in over the summer. He's out on loan in Portland now. And Manuel Ugarte, who came in a month later for whatever reason, his contract was at the end of July, not the end of June like most people's. Can't play him either. Hasn't got a world permit. Trying to get him out on loan as well. Also, this player I got completely mugged off by. Matteo Ruggeri had five stars when I scouted him. He's now in. He's now come in. Maximum three and a half. Paid about six million for him. Valued of four. Fringe player. Can't play him. Trying to get him out on loan. He don't win them all. But lone players next. Curtis Jones has come in to play on that left-hand side. He is a massive upgrade on Rian Brewster, actually. Three and a half stars. Has got the potential. £20,000 a week. We'll take it. Mental's great. Physical's great. Particularly for a young player on that mental front, actually. Technical's sensational, too. A lot of 15s. There's a 16 in his technique and flair. He's pretty handy. I actually thought he was more centrally midfielder. That's not a phrase. I actually thought he was more central midfielder than he was inverted winger. But inverted winger is his primary one. That's where he pops in. And that's where he's probably going to play most of all. But of course, can fill in these other two positions if necessary. Clado, similar situation. Just because of those two players on that right hand side who didn't get work permits, I had to bring in another one as cover. Did kind of forget about Hakon Evian, if I'm honest here. Or deliberately just sort of left him out of the equation. But 
Clado can play centrally. Evian, Evian can play centrally as well. Marcus Edwards is a little bit okay on the central front, but not quite as good. I'll probably use Edwards on the right and then one of these two in the middle for the time being. Physically good, mentally good, technically good as well. On loan from Barcelona, 20k a week as well. Just a nice cover option in all across the board, really. And actually a first choice left back in Shade Kolasinic. I messed that one up. Kolasinic. There we are. Klasinak? Is it Klasinak? It's actually Klasinak. For some reason, I've always read that with an I, like Klasinic. Someone correct me on the pronunciation of Klasinak. I'm pretty certain his first name is meant to be pronounced Shade, but 15 tackling, 14 marking. Mentals are great. Physicals are great as well. I don't know why he's regarded by Arsenal as a backup, but £50,000 a week, they immediately went in at 100000 I halved it and they went, yeah, all right. So I've saved £50,000 a week there. But yeah, first choice. He's better than Ender Stevens by far. He's one of those players who I think is actually underrated by the star rating. Philip Hellander costs £6 million from Rangers. Left-sided back up to Badia's shield. We're actually down to three central defenders by the point I brought Hellander in, so I was in a bit desperate. I nearly got Regani, but he went to but well, he went to Lille for £20,000 or less a week than I offered him. <sighs> That's still a thing in FM21. I've been mugged off about three or four times this transfer window by players who've gone to other places for way less money than I gave them. But never mind. 15 in all the key defensive stats. He has 14 passing, but his technique's rubbish. I don't understand that one. I've never seen a player with such differing passing ability than to his technique and vision. But left-sided player, very much solid backup, will play backup to Badia Shield. And then I guess I'll go for the actual other defender I brought in. I like to have five central defenders. Vavro, might, Vavro slash Egan might be relegated to fifth choice at this point because right-sided player is Wesley Fofana. £24 million up front, three stars now, maybe four, four and a half. Who knows? Technically solid, mentally solid, physically good as well. Ball-playing defender on that right-hand side can get better will get better. He will be my first choice when he's not bloody suspended. We'll get to previous results in a minute. The two performances he's had has been 7.4. We'll definitely take it. Yes, he had a 7.04 for the relegated Leicester, which says a lot when one of your central defenders has an average rating of 7 and you still get relegated. Was tempted by Schmeichel, who had a release clause of 5 million. But that wasn't the other Leicester player I went for. James Madison has also come in, and I thought I'd leave the biggest one to last, other than Calvert-Lewin, of course. Physically, a little bit disappointing, actually, physically. If I'm honest, I would argue he's better than that. But mentals, very good. Technicals, sensational. £22 million we paid for James Madison. An absolute bargain, in my opinion. Midfield orchestrator, gets forward, shoots from distance, hits free kicks with power, set-piece specialist, 14 penalty-taking as well. Like I said, we have improved our penalty-taking situation in general, which might be crucial in another cup competition. What a midfield orchestrator he actually is. £67,000 a week. He does kind of split the difference between the rest of the squad and Cavalo on 100000 there's one other player I'm working to get in, in a position that I still feel is a little bit vulnerable in my opinion, but we'll get to that in a minute. We played three games in the Premier League so far and we've won all three of them. We lost the we lost the Community Shield 5-2, disappointing, Hendricks and Cavaloon scoring there. Brighton 3-0 away from home, which is quite important when you consider where Brighton finished in the end last year. Cavaloon twice, Brewster once, Burnley 3-1 at home, three Cavaloon goals. Aston Villa 2-1 away from home, Sanderberg, Cavaloon, despite Fafana being sent off. Cavaloon, man. Match winner. Absolute match winner. 10 men. Scores a winner in the 87th minute. What a man. And the thing with Cavalloon is as soon as he gets the ball, I feel like it's going in the net. And that's a feeling I've not had with any other player so far in this squad. So I'm already in love with Cavalloon. Never have I felt so vindicated by a transfer. Considering he didn't put that many away for Everton last year, 12 and 34, not great. But the amount of money I was spending on him for narrative reasons more than anything else, never have I felt so vindicated. We smashed Porto, by the way, in the preseason. We do play Wolves tomorrow, but the Europa League draw is very shortly. The three wins from three does see us top. The only only team to win three from three. Man United on our heels with a goal difference of 10 because they beat Norwich 8-0. Liverpool beat Crystal Palace 7-0. The fact they had a negative goal difference before that is in incredible. Oh, by the way, the three promoted sides were the three sides that went down last year. So welcome to FM20, basically. Bournemouth, Norwich and Watford all came back up again. <laughs> Some massive transfers in general, though. Bernardo Silva's gone to Barcelona. Mane's gone to PSG. Dembele's come into Man United. Martinez has come into Liverpool. Uh, Leon Bailey's gone to Manchester City, I think it was. Harvey Barnes went £40 million to Wol Wolverhampton. Harvey Barnes, £40 million. I got James Madison for £22 million. And the wildest thing of all, Tottenham Hotspur spent £73 million on a player despite having no European football. Davison Sanchez went out for about £6 million. I really regret missing that one. I had five... By the time I realised I could have got Davison Sanchez for about £6 million, I already had five defenders. I've been eyeing goalkeepers, that's what the transfer is. Claudio Bravo is ridiculously good for 38 On the comparison, he actually does beat Aaron Ramsdale. 38 Pick your socks up, Aaron Ramsdale. That's not a phrase. And here's the draw. Which pot are we in? Oh god, Atletico Madrid ended up in the Europa League. How's that happened? Dortmund are in here automatically as well. Ew. Atlanta and Valencia. I don't like that pot one, if I'm honest. Monaco in pot two. Good God. 
Apoala in pot two. Sorry, I always pay attention to the Cypriot clubs. I didn't realise they were that good in Europe to end up in pot two. Better than Rangers. I suppose they've been out of it for a while. We're in pot three, so get those first two out of the way. Obviously, we can't have group A because of Arsenal. So we'll get that one out of the way. Maribor end up in there. Looking at Actually, looking at those first two, what would I prefer? Oh, group F for certain. Group F and group G. And I'll be honest, I wouldn't be mad at either E or H just because of the other side in it, really. Group C is not too bad either, Atalanta. One in three. One in three chance of getting the worst one here. Oh, yes. Basel and Lask. I would absolutely take that. As San and the N end up in Group H. That's a quite a, quite a stat one now with Apple. I mean, Apple well. I was hoping they would get an easier, easier team than San and the N. I like to root for the Cypriots. And three clubs remain Hibs, OB, Adens. I think that's Denmark. Yeah, Denmark. The clubs, the nations are there for crying out loud. Good to know my knowledge is good enough, though, to realise I was Denmark without looking. And a Serbian club. We get the Serbian club who are bottom of the rankings. I reckon we've just got the easiest group possible. Lask of Austria, Vov Vojvodina of Serbia and Basel of Switzerland. Comparatively for each of their seedings, I reckon we've just got the easiest group possible. Which is massive, really, because it means I might be able to rotate a little bit. Alright, so hopefully we've got enough time to squeeze in this Wolverhampton game without it being too long, but I'm... Wow. Where's this final venue, by the way? Severe Stadium. <laughs> you bizarrely aren't in it. That's a good point. If Le if Atletico are in the Europa League, did like T Sevilla get into the Champions League? No, Sevilla missed out entirely. It was Bilbao and Sociedad. Atletico Madrid was sixth. Perhaps I should have been raiding Sevilla. I probably should have been raiding Betis, actually. They were 17th. Can you tell I've been scouting goalkeepers? Marchesan, decent. Jan Sommer. See what I mean? Claudio Bravo. Three stars. He's actually better than Ramsdale. Whew. Right. Breathe. That was a lot of talking. I don't think I've ever had to do so many transfer announcements. I'm out of breath already. The next episode will be whichever of those European games is first. Oh, actually, the transfers happened already. I thought the World Point was going to take a little bit longer. So one last transfer. Will he be here in time to play Wolves? I don't think I'll play him against Wolves, but... Oh, he's actually injured, so definitely not available. But welcome. Oh, I wish I picked someone with an easier name. Uga Khan Sakir? Kasir? Kakir? C with the thing. I feel like it's meant to be pronounced like an S or something. So, Sakir? Maybe UC, good old UC. Low on the end, low on the eccentricity. Great on everything else. Everything I like in the keeper, basically. Powered at 18 million now. We brought him in. We've only paid 10 million guaranteed for him. Trebon Sport's goalkeeper. He's only conceded 60 and 99 for Trebon Sport. That's quite a good record. Although 53 and ah, right, no, that doesn't include these seasons for whatever reason. Did have a seven rating though. Do feel like we've just made Arsenal's group a little bit easier by taking one of their toughest rivals goalkeepers. I'll be honest, that wasn't that wasn't as good a record as I was hoping it was going to be there. But attribute-wise, everything I want in a player, and he is better than Aaron Ramsdale on paper. So, also fairly loyal. I've just got an achievement. Know what it is. I've retrained a player, apparently. Who have I retrained? Oh, two more. I'll appeal against the two extra matches. Chelsea beat Liverpool. So, Fafana out for three. He will be immediately replaced by John Egan. Jaden Bogle took a knock while I wasn't paying attention as well. So James Madison, not quite back yet either. Marcus Edwards, not quite back yet either. Junior, Junior Casera is back for 45, so he can make the bench. One thing I like about Klasnic, by the way, is with 14, with 15 tackling, 14 marking, 13 heading, and being six foot, basically, centrally, is quite a he's quite good centrally as well. If I need him to, Jarrett Hendricks, of course, can fill in centrally, but he's not quite good as in those defensive stats in that sense. So I feel like I don't need a defender defender on the bench anymore. Sander Burge took a knot recently as well. Which actually basically forces me to put a defender on the bench anyway. So we will back up with Vavro, I think, just because the left-sided is obviously a little bit more covered by Kalajanic's left foot already. So for this one, we have Ramsdale in goal, Ender Steve. Actually, why am I not starting Kalajanic? What am I doing? Ramsdale in goal, Kalajanic on the left, Badi Shiel, John Egan, Adam Smith, Norwood and Gagliadini, Brewster, Curtis Jones and Hakon Evan on the right side, behind Dominic Cavalloon. It has not escaped me. I've got two former Liverpool players behind a former Everton player. It's working well so far, though. As Klajanitz needs a number, 22 is available, so you'll have that. As the Wolves lineup is pretty solid, actually. They've acquired Getson Fernandez and Ashley Young, but other than that, Jonas Svensson is the only name that I don't think is already a Wolves player. They spent 40 million on Harvey Barnes. Is he injured? One thing I don't like about the update, by the way, is they've, on individuals, is unchecked. I like the fact it checked all of the individuals on individuals because it made my life easier. Now I have to go back to the old way of clicking each section and then doing the faith that way. Also, the two panel thing's still annoying. Don't understand why Wolves can't play in their home kit against us. Bright orange is certainly different to red and white, but never mind. Klasnic. I'm going to stick with Klasnic because I can't pronounce it any other way automatically. Klasnic. Norwood. Gagliadini. Out to Klasnic. Brewster. 
Norwood. Scoops it. Oh, God, it's gone in. What a goal that was. So, yeah, there's still a little bit of the heart of Sheffield in the side. John Egan's still here. Norwood and Fleck are still here. McBurney is, of course, still here. I mean, Brewster's still here, but I wouldn't necessarily call him like the heart of Sheffield just because he's a brand new player for this season anyway. I suppose, I think Lisa Musset might have been there for a couple of seasons already, but what a lovely goal by Oliver Norwood. Everton has signed Ashley Barnes, of all players. All right. Is that their replacement for Dominic Calvert-Lewin? I fear for Everton this year if they barely survived last year and now they've lost Dominic Cavalier and replaced him with Ashley Barnes. At least replace him with Chris Wood, for crying out loud. If you're going to pick a Burnley player, Chris Wood is really good in the game, usually. Anyway, Evian whips this corner in. It's gone to the back post where Bolly has dealt with that nicely for them. Ayozi Perez has gone to pass, of course, relegated with Leicester, so he's returned to the Premier League. Dwight McNeil scored two goals in two minutes, because of course he has. And it goes into half time with really that, just that one highlight that Wolves have done nothing. Things are going well. You're capable of even better. And we've not really seen anything from Dominic Calvert-Lewin today. So we'll just fire him up a little bit as Gedson Fernandez comes on for Pudence. In a weird way, because of the injuries, I quite like the fact we're getting like a sort of almost like a staggered approach to the new players. As this, th this half just vanishing. Jones in the middle is on a 6.5. Brewster is knackered on the left. My only issue there is, guess we bring on McBurney on the left. We'll bring on Collado in the middle. Everything on the right is a bit tired, but I can't really do much about that. Kalasnic on the left back is obviously new to the side. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just do a triple change, actually. Kalasnic is new to the side. We'll take him off for Stevens. Collado and McBurney on for those two attacking players. It got to 76 minutes without, nothing, without anything else happening, so triple change. Why not? I don't like this, though. Ruben Vinegar charging forward. No one's really doing anything about it, and got to be offside, surely? Focusing back on the referee. That basically means it's offside. Hope I'm not about to be mugged off here. The goal doesn't stand. Like, he felt like he was offside just watching the replay. Well, not even the replay, the live. Yeah, a good solid pace in front of the defenders there. Didn't hold his run. Probably would have scored even if he had held his run. And the fact it's 1-0 does worry me a little bit as we get to sort of two minutes to go. Demand a little bit more. Dominic Cavalloon doesn't score in the match for the first time this year. What a showcase that's been. We had a late chance, apparently, which really rocketed up our XG. Didn't see it, but we really had a late chance. I'm actually going to say it was a bit of a let-off. They seem to agree with that. It was a top goal by Oliver Norwood, and that was the only question they had to deal with. Saar has put in a transfer request despite being back in the Premier League. What a goal by Oliver Norwood. Dean Smith to keep an eye on John Egan. John Egan did actually have a big transfer bid earlier in the window, but I wasn't having it. I considered it, but I wasn't having it. Not until I signed defenders. If someone wants to come in now, I could probably deal with it. But at the same time, I would quite like to keep him around. So with that, four from four in the Premier League. That's not gone without notice there. Ah, oh, the first one is Voivodina. I genuinely don't know what to do here because, of course, I want to show you our first foray into Europe, but Voivodina? You know what? You know what? Sod it. Liverpool and Voivodina. Next time out. I'll see you for that. Until next time. Ta-ra. Oh, I nearly forgot. Cavaloon wasn't the only person we brought back to Sheffield. Now it's ta -ra.